Hi. guys <laughs> here we go can you hear me okay can you all hear me can you hear me just in case you can't so um whew. i i was planning on uh let's see make sure can you guys hear me can I get like any thumbs up if you can hear me? Yes. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you all. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I um, was planning on wearing a really cute heart center. Wait, I got to clean my screen a little. Oh, thanks for the hearts. Wear a really cute heart centered outfit uh with heart necklace and it is you know a little chilly and the weather report said it's not going to rain today and it's supposed to go up to like 60 degrees but it is uh feeling like any minute i may have to run into duck and cover um and um i'm spending the day like working in my little uh potting shed garden sanctuary and taking Mitzi the Menace for walks. So this is me in my uh, potting shed, walking a maniac dog outfit. <laughs> no beautiful hearts to show, um, which has me a little broken, broken hearted, but I'm so happy to be with you guys. So there we go. Um, today, we are going to continue with our chakra work and um for those of you who are new to this series every saturday at 11 during the whole you know quarantine time i'm leading a little class on working with our different energy centers in our body um and the information i share doesn't follow any one particular path or technique. It's basically my accrued knowledge of my many years of studying with a variety of, of amazing teachers, amazing schools, and, you know, direct lessons from those who love us so much. Um, so feel welcome to absorb what a what you feel you want to absorb and release whatever you feel doesn't apply to you or if you need to alter anything to fit better with the system you work with you know if it works for you it works for you i'm just sharing tools you will know how to apply and utilize them as best benefits you um so Oh, good. So Mitzi the Menace is just like barking nonstop. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I'm going to balance having a maniac dog and doing anything that's not all my focus on her all the time. Um, so, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> my mom is staring at me through the window with like daggers because the dog is barking nonstop. <laughs> um, so <laughs> mom, I can't keep an eye on her because if she runs away, I can't run after her. Did you hear me? Okay. <laughs> All right. So Mitzi, come here. So Apparently, at this point, Mitzi the Maniac and I are going to share heart chakra with you. So the reason I'm working on um, sharing these chakra um, lessons is because 
all the frequencies on our planet are shifting. I mean, you don't need to be a profound psychic to know that this is obvious. Um, everything is shifting, new frequencies are coming in. I mean, the truth is they're not new frequencies. They've always been here, but our 3D world is connecting with them in a way that we have not ever or for a very long time. And that's a whole other lesson. If you join Wednesday nights, I can explain more about that in our free Wednesday night classes, because that's about receiving information Saturday is about building your energetic network so that you can hold your own uh, awareness while connecting with all the new connection frequencies. Um, so you know how like when you're meditating, like if you're on a guided meditation and then at a certain point, the meditation leader takes you to a frequency that's so high, you just kind of space out and then they pick you up you know, on the way back down. Um, this work that we're doing on Saturdays will allow you to maintain your consciousness for far longer. Um, an example of why this is helpful, like those of you who are a little more Christian studies, you know, in the Bible, they say Jesus uh, in his last night at Gethsemane uh, was saying, won't any of you stay awake with me? And all of the disciples fall asleep and you know you're reading the bible you're like god what a bunch of jerks you know he's like please stay awake with me it's my last night with you and they all like pass out that's not what happened obviously what happened was they're all meditating together creating their own mandala of energy to support yeshua and he took his frequency so high he took the energy so high that they like spaced out um and we can all relate to that i guarantee every one of us who's meditated has had that experience the more you have a strong energetic structure the more you can hit really high frequencies and stay awake um and you'll also notice like I'm not gonna call out names here because we're all on our path, but we've suddenly hit a point where certain teachers, teacher healers are unable to, um, they're like hitting frequencies that are amazing for them. However, they're not able to hold the energy on their own because they're like shooting straight up without building the structure. And that's not anything against them, that's like, you know, I was taught how to do this. They maybe were not taught how to do this in their practice. So they wanna get all their students together, which is very common, you know, so that everyone gets an energy. And instead of going on the traditional format where you all come together and do maybe a drumming circle or a ceremony and you all connect so the teacher can take everyone up with them. In this case, the teacher is using the energy of everyone to take themselves up higher. Um, and a lot of teachers are not recognizing that this is what they're doing. So again, there's no value judgment. It's just something that I've observed more and more. So if you are a teacher and you're finding that you're falling out of sync with the ability to bring your students with you versus using their energy to hold yourself up, this kind of work will be really good for you so that you can go back to your intended way of working. The more you have energetic structural integrity, the higher you can take your crown chakra, the deeper you can send your root chakra. You can start working with all the chakras outside of your body, start working with your sacred anatomy, the energy of your being that is outside of your physical body. And you can, um, hold your awareness for greater periods of time at higher frequencies with um, more interesting, expanded connections. So, um, because I hate to say this, I need to get my dog. She has run off and um, 
I need to have a word with my mom about not letting the dog out. So I'm going to take a one minute break and be right back. <laughs> Okay, the nice thing about living in the middle of the woods is there's not that far the dog's going to run uh, and luckily she knows to like not go too far. The scary thing is we have coyotes and foxes and predator birds, red-tailed hawks, owls, you know, like it's not good for a 10-pound dog to be out <laughs> unprotected. <laughs> um, so she's safe in the house <laughs> and now i can focus on what we're doing um if at any point you have any questions or anything you want to share feel welcome to type it in the comments um i um uh, and i'll get to them as as we go forward okay so so far, we've been working with the chakras inside the body. We'll get to all the outside the body stuff later <laughs> down the road. Uh, we worked on the root chakra and how small and closed playpen. You know, I thought about it. This girl is like, we think she's a Chihuahua, Italian Greyhound, um, Basenji, Mountain Goat teacup poodle flying you know being like this she's she has gotten out of every enclosure every harness you know she's just like gone and if she's like in an enclosure that she doesn't want to be in she's very loud so we'll figure it out we've only had her two weeks you know and she came from a very stressful high kill um pound so uh like we got her like she was rescued out the day before she was supposed to be you know killed so yeah we'll give her a little time she'll get it together and she's only three years old so uh we'll get there um okay <laughs> so we worked with our root chakra and we've worked with our crown chakra in seeing our crown chakra and root chakra as connected to each other <laughs> yes <laughs> seeing our crown chakra and our root chakra connected together like an hourglass not worrying about like what's happening with the chakras in the middle of your body as we set up the crown chakra to be open high and wide and the root chakra to be open there we go you know deep and wide your root chakra for the nature of the work we're doing here. Um, hi, Cheryl. Your root chakra should always be deeper and wider than your crown chakra is high and wide so that your root chakra gives you a solid base of structure and support. Um, and you'll find the more you work with this, whenever you adjust your crown chakra, with your permission, your root chakra will always like adjust to counterbalance. And when you adjust your root chakra, your crown chakra will always naturally counterbalance. So um, practice, 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 play with your chakras. The reason when we establish the crown and the root, and again, the hourglass shape, as you go further along with your practice, you may find that hourglass expands out and becomes like a tube and your body is floating in the middle of it and all the beautiful energy is flowing through you and around you. Uh, you may find yourself naturally getting into that situation now. So if that happens, 
great, you know, go for it. That is great when you want to bring in more energy than you're comfortable flowing through your body. So you just let it, you let your chakras expand out and it's flowing through you and around you. Absolutely great. If you're like, if that's a little more advanced than you want to go right now, don't worry about it. Just keep the hourglass. Um, both techniques are great. I do both of them all the time. If you find that the energy coming in, it's so much that it's overwhelming you, you can ask them, your guides, less energy, slow it down a little. We don't need to have it, you know, the Niagara Falls rushing in. Uh, that can be a little much and make you feel a little like overwhelmed. Or you can adjust your crown chakra to be a little more narrow. But if you feel like, oh my God, that puts so much pressure on me, you know, open it a little wider. That's where sometimes expanding it out so that you're just floating and what doesn't comfortably flow through you flows around you. It takes all the pressure off the energy coming in. It does not mean you need to add more energy. You're just giving more space, you know, more protected space for your conduit effort. Um, hi, Uma. I'm so glad you can join us. And I'm going to mention now, and I'll mention again, uh, tomorrow, Uma and Rob Pritchett, Carlos the Medium, and I are doing a free uh, 12 o'clock to 2.30 p.m., symposium on zoom and you need to register to get the zoom link uh i have it posted here on facebook and i have it posted on uh meetup and it's also uma robin carlos also the same thing and that's all about opening your heart joyous heart uh bringing joy into your heart so for you guys who are here today Joining us tomorrow for that will make the perfect weekend of extraordinary skills. And um, and I'll, when we're done here today in the comments, I'll post a link to it as well. Um, and it's so great. I love the fact that at this time when we're all coming together, um, some of my favorite peer professionals and I, you know, and I obviously that we're all just like, Let's be in this together. Let's do all these amazing free programs. And, um, you know, that opens my heart. <laughs> so uh, that's okay, Crystal. Join in. And um, not that much happened yet. Feel welcome to, uh, if you join in late, feel welcome to uh, jump in earlier. And Caitlin, awesome. I'll put the link to it um, here uh, at the end of, of this a uh, little lesson. Okay, so we have our hourglass of crown and root. This is what, it's like your shell energy. And then you have your root chakra that's for your personal work. You can separate out the hourglass root chakra and your personal root chakra that's in you. Your root chakra is what gives you all of your base of support. It connects you to nature magic, Every shaman I've ever worked with has a powerful root chakra. Every channeler who um, is channeling powerful messages has a powerful root chakra. The root chakra is allows what allows you to go from a free floating being of light to being connected to earth, healing earth, sending messages through you to earth. You know, it allows you to become a divine conduit. So the root chakra is super, super important. And it's what gives you like the, the gravitas to all the spiritual work you're going to do. It makes you dependable. Uh, it lets you like bring in a lot of stuff and hold your space. Without a root chakra fully grounded, you will always pass out when the frequency gets too high or you'll float away off somewhere else. Um, so root chakra really really good and again i like you'll notice i kind of there's the shell root chakra and then there's the inner working and they're the same but you can sort of imagine them a little different and then we worked with our sacral chakra which is your gut instinct your creative force where you give birth to new ideas where um 
uh, it's your artistic integrity, your imagination. It's the easiest way for your guardian angel to connect with you and guide you, you know, your gut instinct. Um, we worked with our solar plexus chakra, which is your uh, motivation, your uh, forward, your action chakra. The sacral and the solar plexus chakra, when they work together, then your actions will always be divinely inspired and your divine inspirations can result in something other than pleasant ideas. They can result in things happening. Today we're working on the heart chakra and tree hugging, tree hugging, very grounding, yes. And even just lying on the floor, like if you're in a high rise apartment, you're like, great, there's no trees around. Just lie on the floor and imagine you are in a meadow and mother earth is cradling you in her arms. Very, very grounding. Or sit and imagine that you are sitting on a park bench in a beautiful garden. Very grounding. Um, if you do the park bench one, be receptive to fairies coming and hanging out with you. <laughs> so today we are working on our, um, yes, the ungrounded root chakra would could possibly make the room spin around you. And it gives you that like vertigo feeling and, um, you know, when you get like really queasy or you feel like you're like, whoa, like that, um, then pay attention. You may notice the energy is going down to your somewhere between your heart, your solar plexus and your sacral chakra. And then it's not going down. When you give the energy permission to keep going, then you're like, oh, that was good. And that's when then you can ask for an adjustment on how much energy is coming in or how wide you want the external to be. Um, <laughs> yes, and we ETs are awesome. Keep in mind, something fun to meditate on when you open up anytime. What's the difference between an extraterrestrial and a light being? What's the difference between us, when we're not in physical body, when we are with our soul and we're beings of pure energy and an angel who's a being of pure energy. Who's the most eternal? Our eternal soul, an angel's eternal soul, an extraterrestrial civilization that may exist in a different frequency or a different dimension, or light beings who are non-physical beings that may be in a civilization or a collective. What's the difference between any of us? That's a great meditation prompt. And invite anyone to come in and answer it. Um, that's where joining our Wednesday night classes comes in helpful. So our heart chakra, which is um, pretty awesome. Um, for most of you, it's your favorite. It's actually three chakras. We have the chakra energy, where the energy flows down from source to the heart. And then you're sending love down to your other chakras, solar plexus, sacral root into earth. Or you're bringing love of earth up. And then it sends it up to your throat, your third eye, your crown, where you're emanating out. So having an open heart chakra located like in the center of your bosom is wonderful. We also have our physical heart that goes ba-dump, ba-dump, ba-dump. Our physical heart has been beating literally from inside the, your mother's womb until your last moment of life, okay? The physical heart, like it doesn't even have to be told what to do. It just keeps going and it takes all the blood and oxygen and it sends them to your body. All right. Every cell in your body has an oxygen receptor. So every cell in your body needs to breathe. And it is like, hold on, I'm getting more comfortable. <laughs> um, and it is through your heart 
pumping all of the blood that your whole body becomes oxygenated. This is one reason why it's really important to do heart health exercises, cardiovascular exercises, because that keeps the blood and the oxygen flowing through your entire body. Also, as this beautiful sacred divine energy is flowing through you, some of it gets pulled to your physical heart. This is divine love for you, for you, for each of us specifically, straight from divine to our bodies. Remember, we are emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, uh, and intellectual. We have five bodies. When the divine love hits your heart chakra and it sends it to your heart, you are getting all of that beautiful loving energy and it mixes with your body. So all of your five bodies, specifically, most specifically, your physical body is being infused with divine love. When you send this divine love into your heart, it mixes with all the blood and oxygen and it flows through your body. So literally every cell of your body is receiving divine love. If you ever wonder, like, think about that. Think about that. I know I sound a little glib, but think about that. That's a really big deal. If you ever wonder, like, how the um, Hindu and Buddhist monks and nuns are able to live for, like, hundreds and hundreds of years, this is one of the very important tips, that they fill every cell of their body with divine love, every molecule their bodies are constantly radiating with it. Some of you say, when you're meditating, I'm trying to fill with divine love, but I have a blocked heart. Therefore, I can't receive it. I have damn emotional damage in my heart from my life. And then what you're doing is you're taking the pain of your heart and you're sending it to the rest of your body, blocking you. Oh, now I can't take any action. My solar plexus is blocked because of the pain in my heart. Oh my God, my sacral is not receiving any messages. My guardian angel has deserted me because the pain in my heart has infected my sacral chakra. And I'm not making fun of you when I say this. This is like a real thing. We've all had this. I've had it. We've all had it. At times of immense emotional pain, we take all of that pain that's in our heart and we send it out and we corrupt and pollute our bodies. Um, this is part of the origin of German new medicine, which is in no way undermining people becoming ill for because of physical reasons, like you fall and break your leg, you have a broken leg because you fell, or you smoke two packs of cigarettes a day and you get cancer, or you live next to a mercury factory and you become sick. It's in no way negating it. What it's saying is additionally, people become ill from emotional and psychological reasons. One of which is harboring pain in your heart and letting it spread to your body. So you are putting toxic energy into your body and not a blame game. If you have done this, do not blame yourself and do not then say, oh, that's why I got this, that's why I got that. This is understanding there's more to us than the one body. And most of us were raised thinking we only had the one body, the physical body. We didn't know about the upkeep of the other four bodies, emotional, spiritual, psychological, intellectual. Um, so as you're learning, learn to honor yourself and honor yourself for the really good care you have given yourself all your life up till now. And as you learn to incorporate more knowledge, you take even better care. So love yourself for this. So as the divine energy flows into our heart chakra, we send some to our physical heart, where all the pain and distress can now be filled with divine love to help you get that higher perspective on your life experiences, to help you become a little more neutral to the situation so that you can help process the, the experience in a loving, gentle, caring way. The same as you would any friend who comes to you and says, 
I have a broken heart for blank. The first thing you do is like, oh, let me hug you. Well, not now, but out of coronavirus times, you know, let me be here for you. Let me be your friend and help you through this. The divine love flowing through your body is offering the same support to your physical heart and then send divine love to your physical body. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> and then the third heart here in your right bosom, because most of us were like, oh, I have my physical heart, I have my chakra heart. There's nothing here, just ignore this part of my body. Of course there's something there. This is a part of our body where the energy connects outward. We connect with our community around us, those we love. We connect with divine. This is, I call it the cosmic heart. And honestly, this part, I've only received knowledge from like my guides and directly from the etheric surgeons. I've never had like formal teaching on it. So if anyone has a different name for it, you know, feel welcome to share. So the cosmic heart, as I call it, here on the right side is the energy that goes outward and it connects outward to others. And I'm not sure if pollen is falling on me or rain. Well, we'll find out. Either I'll be sneezing soon or running for cover. Um, so when I'm doing like etheric surgery work on people and I get to this part of their body, I um, uh, sometimes I'll see things in there that are like, um, like the clutter drawer in your kitchen or like uh, if you have a splinter and the body's like building uh, maybe a little infection or scar tissue around it, um, but you know it doesn't belong there and it's interrupting the energy flow. So I'll see things in there and I'll say, that's so strange. I see a rocking chair here or I see a jewelry box or I see a document that is like a court order or a will or you know like i'll tell them what i see and they'll say oh yeah oh my god i thought i'd gotten over that that's the blankety blank you know i had a fight with someone i loved or i was betrayed by someone that's where we actually store the elements that are so painful that we feel like we can't um face them they get pushed away and it interrupts your ability to connect out there. So it's not just this heart we put in protection. This heart can get put in protection. It's really, really important to acknowledge everything so that you're not just, so you're not blocking the energy going to your body and you're not blocking the energy going to your community, both your physical 3D community and your guides, your angels, your soul family. You want all of this to be open. So here's the thing, and this is not what I was taught. This is just how I see it. Divine energy comes in, reaches your heart chakra, goes over to your physical heart, where some of it is pumped into your body and some of it goes back to your heart chakra. And then it goes over to your cosmic heart, where some of it goes out to the community and some of it, you know, is absorbed from the community to your heart chakra, just as your physical body is sending energy back to your heart. And then it goes back to your heart chakra. And the energy is going around and around like a figure eight, like an eternity symbol. And I see this because love is eternal. Only love is real. I mean, Brian Weiss wrote that beautiful book with that as the title. Love is what it's all about. And when the love comes in from divinity and goes into your physical heart and is pumped into your body, and eventually that is pumped back, mixing with the oxygen and the blood back to your heart, it's not like it's pumped to your body and then there's nothing left. It always returns to your heart and goes back to your divine flow, where you're connecting your physical essence to the divine energy. And it goes to your cosmic, your community, but you're putting out and the more open you are, the more you can receive and it comes back. 
So through the three heart chakras, you're actually connecting yourself, mind, body, and spirit to yourself, to your physical world, to your community, your divine world. It's very, very powerful. This is the only chakra that is three chakras, but it fills your entire chest cavity, front and back and all around. Very, very powerful. I love the heart chakra. <laughs> Those of you who see heart color or aura color may notice some people see the heart chakra as green. Some see it as pink or rosy or a little purplish. It really depends on where your energy is connecting with. People who uh, are very connected to nature um, or very connected with caregiving on a physical level, you'll generally see a lot more green here. People who are connected on a more divine level, uh, you may see more pink or purple here or see it all mixed around. Um, blue, if it's a very pale blue, then people are in a very pure way caring about someone's emotional and spiritual well-being because there's a lot of white in there. And if it's a deep blue, then that's someone who's usually like a very divine healer or teacher um, on an emotional, spiritual level. On a physical level, like a doctor, you know, nurse, parent, <laughs> devoted parent, you'll see a lot more green. So that's another thing I love about the heart chakra because you're connecting on all levels. The color of the chakra energy can change, you know, because you're radiating your energy. Like root chakras are always red. It can be anywhere from a pale red to like a deep, deep, rusty blood red, you know, and the uh, sacral chakra is always orange but it can be anything from a bright clown orange to flames like a fire with a little red woven in to, you know, uh, like a flower, like a sunflower. You know, the solar plexus is always yellow, but it can be any shade of yellow. The heart, it can really change color. It can really have a good time playing around. Um, so when you work with your heart chakra, you can also ask it like, what color are you today? And that also lets you know, are you more focused on your physical well-being, energetically, not mentally, or on your community well-being? Are you in a moment where you need to receive more or give more? Are you a little more extroverted, introverted? So that's a very cool thing. Yeah, Caitlin, pink and deep blue, those are like beautiful. That's such, I mean, think about this. Every color of love is beautiful. And it really lets you know like where your energy is at the moment, naturally flowing. When you open up to the divine, the energy that flows in is energy. What happens to it in your body is your energy. You're the one who connects with it in the way where if pure energy flows in and then suddenly your entire aura is sparked a certain color, that's your energy mixing with the divine energy to radiate your natural color. I guess I'm asking about the triple heart colors, blue left side, gold center, pink right, for example. Um, yeah, that totally could be. So if you have a lot of blue on your left side, you are sending a lot of spiritual, uh, emotional well-being to your body. Uh, gold in the center, I mean, I'm sorry, that's just beautiful. That's a very cosmic connection. So you may have like light beings or collectives that are really working with you right now. Uh, you know, maybe you're working with like Lemurians or someone like that. And then pink on the right, you are sending pure love to your community, very divine love to your community. So that's awesome. Awesome. You know, um, when... I have a video of me on YouTube. It's very short where we have my aura camera and over a period of like, not that many minutes, it was like just a few minutes, we kept photographing my aura while I meditated on the word love. 
And you can see my aura changing just with the one word love. So, you know, we, we have um, so much going to us that when we connect with our state of love, we can literally change everything. You see, you saw green as he spoke a light code. And again, green connected with physical caregiving and nature, the planet. If you are open with a gold chakra and divine cosmic alien light beings are sending codes through you and it turns to green energy, you know, that's very meaningful. That's very, very meaningful. And, you know, over the next week or the rest of your lives, I really encourage you guys to play with this concept. Um, okay, so let me get recalibrated in my head here. I, I know there was something else I wanted to say before we went into the meditation. Um, mm, I got it. <laughs> so here's one of the things about working with your heart center and your love. Because we're in life and we're living our 3D lives, and right now it's pretty stressful time for a lot of us. And, oh my God, I'm so, hold on. There, sorry, I'm like so uncomfortable. <laughs> I didn't think how squished I would be sitting here. <laughs> okay, that's better. So um, we're in our 3D lives dealing with our 3D stuff. And we have all of our self-recriminations, the majority of which are not even merited because we're all pretty awesome people. And yet, you know, we find any excuse to put ourselves down. Um, everyone, everyone gets that. Uh, Self-judgment is part of, you know, what we're dealing with in life. And, ooh, the sun's coming out. Okay. If it gets too bright, I'll just move under the shade. Um, so don't worry about all the self-judgment because that is an external force. When we're dealing with the heart, we're dealing with our pure internal energy. So I wanna talk a little bit about where this energy is coming from. Before you come to life, you are part of your soul. You are an aspect of your soul that has not chosen to express yet as life. And your soul and you, your little aspect, go in and get together with your energetic mentors, your guardian angel, anyone else you've contacted to help, and you actually plan out your life. Uh, and that's a whole other workshop. And then you come into life, which may or may not go as planned, depending on you know the fact that nothing ever goes as planned. Um, and while you're in life, you don't remember the plan you had. Odds are you don't even remember your soul. You don't remember anything. So you end up just like, say, you know, the baby fox that was raised by raccoons and you think you're a raccoon or, um, you know, whatever. You're imprinting on your local environment and you're absorbing what the world around you tells you to become your reality. So if you were raised being told like, you know, I was raised being told certain things. I grew up in the 1960s in the US. It was a time when uh, luckily for me, I had the world's coolest parents. Um, so I did not play with like Barbie dolls and do tea parties unless I wanted to with my friends. But a lot of my girlfriends I grew up with were told you're only a girl, you have to like get married and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You'll never make anything of your life. And, um, you know, I mean, I had that also from the world around me. Luckily, I was protected by my parents who taught me differently, uh, which then made it hard when I went to the world around me that was trying to push me in. But anyway, I grew up having a world tell me 
I shouldn't even bother finishing high school because I should just get married. And if I listened to them, that would have been my life. I, uh, as some of you know, I was raised with a, a sibling who was very mean to me. She literally tried to kill me and, you know, she did a lot of unpleasant things, um, an older sibling. And uh, she told me that I was mentally retarded. And I grew up thinking I was mentally retarded until I was in my 30s. I thought I was mentally retarded. Actually, 28. I think I was 28 when I learned that I was not severely mentally retarded. When I look back on what I could have done with my life if I had realized, you know, um, I didn't have to listen to my sister on any of the things she told me, it would have been a game changer. To this day, now at age 57, like, 30 years after I learned the truth that I'm just like a good old regular person, quirky, but you know, um, I still carry with me the self image of what was given to me. So here's the thing, who are you? Are you what society out there tells you you are? Or are you the eternal being that's in your core radiating outward? And you know, the answer is you're both because you're here to have an experience, but um, you can redefine your 3D reality to be whatever you want it to be. It's just a matter of taking your lucid dreaming skills and like making them bigger and stronger. You know, like when you're dreaming and something unpleasant is happening and you're like, wait a minute, this is a dream. This is my dream. I can do and be whatever I want. And you change the dream. It's the same with life. But until when you're in a dream, until you fully know I can do and be whatever I want, I'm going to take power over my life because I'm not the character in my dream. I am me, the person in a dream state. Until you know that, you're the victim of your dream. In 3D life, you are your soul's dream. You crafted yourself, you designed yourself, you planned your life to see how you would get through this stuff and what experiences you could then bring back to the soul. Why would we do this to ourselves? Well, suppose um, you're in life and you're like, oh, I am an eternal being of love and light and I've always known it, I'll always know it. So I'm going into life and I'm going through this challenge. That's okay, I'll just get through it because I'm an eternal being of love and light. You're not gonna have the impact. You're not gonna have the experience or the lesson. Um, you know, the uh, so we have to kind of empty ourselves. Like even me, born with full memory of my whole existence, I have a lot of closed doors that I don't have access to until beyond certain experiences because I had to have my experiences too. Um, oh, thank you guys. Um, so it's important to remember because if we have pain in our physical heart, pain in our cosmic heart, these are caused by external experiences. They are not who you are, okay? How you deal with them is lessons given to whom you are, which is an eternal being of divine love. So listen to this clearly. You are an eternal being of divine love. Dreaming, acting in the dream you designed for yourself. The experiences you have here will be valuable, just like the experiences you have in your dreams are valuable to your awakening self, the experiences you have in life are valuable to your eternal self. You have, I guarantee, if you are a human soul, you have had lives that were harder than this one, I guarantee. And you've had lives that are easier than this one, I guarantee. I have done a lot of past life readings 
the life you have in this life, it may be really hard, it may be really easy, it may be up and down, but you designed it for yourself for a reason. And the quicker you accept your eternal divinity, the more you can fill yourself with gracious love without judgment. And then you can really start taking your lessons up a notch. Um, if you have been angry with yourself for something you did at age eight, you can go ahead and release that. You'll find it definitely here in your cosmic heart, and it may be buried deep like a little splinter in your physical heart. If you uh, have had a lot of bad romance experiences, learn from them, release them. How are you gonna find like true wonderful love if you're walking around like wounded? And I'm not just talking about true, wonderful love, like romance, you know, that's hit or miss for all of us. I'm talking, I don't mean hit or miss like every time. I mean, um, you know, I don't know if our soulmates are alive while we're alive or if we have other people we're compatible with for life. You know, I have no idea that can vary person to person, depending on how you're walking your path and how others are walking their paths. There's no guarantee on that, but I do guarantee that while you're in life, people who are ready to love you for whom you are, are around and they want to step forward and be in your life, just as you want to be in their lives. So, okay, sun's coming out. I'm going to walk. Oh my God. Oh no, that's terrible. I walked, what, 10 feet and lost the internet. <laughs> so, um... I don't even know if um, if that other video is even like um, going to be saved or not. <laughs> well, um, so I apologize for that. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Oh my God, I lost the internet. So um, I hope all of you guys are jumping back on to join for the meditation. <laughs> Leave it to me to have um technical difficulties while talking about love <laughs> okay so oh i'm so sorry we'll give everyone a minute to join us again hopefully um i am going to put all of these videos yeah hi ariel yeah um uh, oh hi amber yeah i um uh my uh my laptop suddenly went into airplane mode and I don't, maybe I hit something who knows um, so uh, good to be back and I commented on the other one you started uh, oh, thanks um, what I am going to do is I'm downloading all of the videos of this series and um, putting them in my, on my website as a program. And so I, I keep promising, oh, this week that'll happen, but this week that will happen. And then I'll put a link here so you guys can all go and access all of these videos um, for free. Uh, so if you wanna go back and watch anything and I'll put short additional material, you know, handouts and things like that on there as well and some other videos I have on YouTube I'll put on there. So um, again, I am so sorry about that. I <laughs> such a klutz. I probably um, put something on the airplane mode button by accident without realizing it and disengaged everything. Okay, so we're going to do a quick meditation and I keep saying quick, who knows? It might take forever. And this is, um, we're going to open up and bring divine love in. And then we're going to send some to our physical heart back, send some to our cosmic heart back. And then, um, when we're feeling really good about that and the energy is flowing, um, we're going to 
send it pumping through our hands as well and let our hands sort of touch each other, play with each other, um, make little energy balls, move our hands around. Um, and then we'll end at the end with putting our hands filled with love, with love flowing through and put it to our face and our third eye. Um, so it's a, it's a nice little exercise. Um, this is something that I really recommend you practice because um, you're giving yourself a love flush. You're fully flushed with love. And uh, <laughs> thank you about my beautiful home. Yeah, it's my parents' home. I can't take credit for it. But um, I will tell you, it's not because we're like rich or anything. This is what happens when a family spends 50 years constantly building their home. Um, like I built the planters there, uh, all the flagstone patties around we built, we built this deck. My mom made all the ceramics, you know, um, my dad put up the skylights. We have a wood workshop down below. Um, so we are we're just constantly building and working and creating and it makes us happy <sighs> um, can you clear blockages at a time we bringing energy yes yes and here's the thing a blockage is just stuck energy certainly with coronavirus we're learning a lot about blood clots creating blockages so um, I'm not saying this kind of work will help prevent blood clots, but um, it gives you a vision because I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not gonna even go there with the political jokes because it's like shooting fish in a barrel. But um, yeah, if you have a blockage, and you know what, I'll do also um, a separate meditation on specifically on blockage clearing, but you can do it when the energy is flowing and you hit like an area where there's pain, like you're like, oh my God, my heart feels sharp pain um, or a dagger or a splinter or like something is screaming at me or there's a wall somewhere. You can certainly fill it with love, invite it to become like a sponge and just send the love energy through it and give it permission to absorb all the love. Um, if it wants to speak with you, you know, that's okay. And one of the nice things about having these recorded is you can go back and do it again. Uh, so if while we're doing this meditation, you feel like you need to stop at a point and really work with something that pops up at you, feel welcome to you can go back and watch the meditation again and do the the flowing or if you're doing the flowing and something comes out and says i'm in pain i'm upset um you know first of all always acknowledge it and thank it for being part of you thank it for being connected with you thank it for communicating with you most of the time when pain comes up and presents itself like this it's asking for acknowledgement and it's ready for release. If it doesn't want to leave your body, it knows how to hide somewhere and remain unobserved. But if it's coming up going, hey, I'm the broken heart from seven years ago, odds are all it wants is a little love and permission to be released. Remember, pure energy comes into our body we make things with the energy so it becomes our energy when this pain leaves your body it's no longer pain it returns to being the pure energy that it once was and it can return to its soul energy family if it's trapped in your body as pain unless it really wants to be pain odds are it's ready to leave your body and return to its natural state of pure energy. So you are not killing anything, you're not harming anything by releasing it. You are literally letting it going back, go back to what it is created to be, divine energy, with a divine energy family, divine energy mandalas it connects with. It had an experience in your body that allows it to take the memory of this 
and do like fuller, better work elsewhere. It volunteered to be the energy in your body, but now it's learned its lesson and it's ready to go. Um, Leah, I hope that answers your, your question. So sometimes it may need a negotiation like, okay, before I leave, I want to have some happy experience. I want you to go for a walk in nature and take me with you. And when we're smelling the roses, invite me to leave them. Like it may have like, or I need you to acknowledge that you're a pretty good person so that I can leave knowing I left you in a good state. Or let's just like energetically hold hands a little bit and give each other gratitude and then I'll go. Like sometimes the energy has conditions, but they're not going to be bad conditions. If they are, then, uh, you know, you're coming at it with too much self-protection and you might want to work with a shaman for a soul release, you know, uh, or something like that. Um, okay. So let's do our meditation, the one that I've been promising for an hour. So it's okay if your eyes are closed or open and spaced out. Um, let your body breathe however it wants to breathe. Your body has been breathing literally since the first moment that you left your mother's womb and will continue breathing until your last breath of life, the same time that your heart has its last beat of life. So give yourself permission to just relax and breathe. Let your energy just sort of chill out. Invite all the energy in your feet to relax and flow and invite all the energy in your body to just flow down through your body, through your legs, down through your feet, your very relaxed feet, deep into earth, where Gaia, Pacamama, Mother Earth is there holding you in her embrace, absorbing all your energy, transmuting it to the highest form of love, and then sending it out to all of your brothers and sisters of our planet. Invite the top of your head to relax. And invite your crown chakra to just open up. So all the beautiful, sacred, divine and cosmic energy, source energy can flow in through the top of your head flow through your mind, down through your body, your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. If you feel any pain or pressure in your head, acknowledge it and give it permission to relax, give it permission to resolve itself. This is just your body's natural reaction to someone or something coming and Connecting with you, the same as you might get startled and jump a little when someone comes behind and taps you on the shoulder. It is not necessary for you to feel any pain or pressure when you open up to receive energy. Take a moment, invite your root chakra the bottom of the hourglass to spread out deep and wide into earth. As the energy is flowing through you, it spreads out deep and wide. Give you a beautiful support, a base to help with all the energetic work we're going to do. Structure. You'll notice your crown chakra automatically and naturally opens up high and wide, perfectly supported by your deep and wide root chakra. Give yourself a moment 
to feel this energy and allow the chakras to adjust, allow the crown and root chakra to become comfortable with each other. And all this beautiful, sacred, divine, cosmic source energy that's flowing in through your body, filling your body, as it meets any blocks or chakras, it just flows in and fills them and then keeps on flowing like a river flowing down a mountain in springtime. As the water flows, if it meets any boulders or branches, it flows over them, it flows around them, it picks them up and carries them away as the energy flows down, down, down. Looking down above the top of your beautiful crown chakra is your soul watching over you. Your guardian angel is there. Your guides, your guardians, your soul family are all there. Ask them to surround, fill, and watch over your crown chakra so that only the most beautiful, loving energy can flow in and connect with you. Ask them that whatever divine cosmic energy, pure energy is flowing in, that they fill it with their love, enhance the love, magnify it. So as it flows down to you, what you're receiving is not just pure energy, but the highest love energy amplified by those who love you purely and completely. Letting your body flow in through your mind, your face, your brain, down through your neck, your throat, your spine, down your shoulders, to your heart chakra. And of course, energy keeps flowing down to your solar plexus, your sacral, your root, filling your entire body, your bones, your hips, your legs, your feet into earth. Beautiful, pure energy filled with personal love for you. And as this energy is flowing and radiating, some of this energy reaches your heart chakra and gets sent off to your physical heart. Your physical heart, which is always beating, pumping blood and oxygen into your body through all the veins and arteries, through all the blood flow, your flesh, your organs, your bones. Your physical heart is also filling with divine love. If you have areas in your heart that feel painful or pressure or blocking, invite them to resolve and release if they wish, or to stay and absorb. Everything in your heart may become one with the word love. As this beautiful sacred divine energy flows through your body to your heart chakra, flows into your heart chakra, mixes with all the blood and oxygen and flows is pumped into your body. You may say to your heart the mantra, love, love, love. And some of this energy is flowing in through your heart, through your body, 
and then returns from your body to your heart. And some of this energy flows in your heart and mixes with the returning energy and is re-diverted back to your heart chakra so that all of this beautiful, sacred, divine energy flowing through your chakras receives your personal love, your personal love as a gift to flow through your energetic chakras and deep into earth, connecting you with our beautiful nature magic, connecting you personally with Gaia. You are not just a conduit, you are a connector. Some of this energy that reaches your heart chakra continues to your right side, to your cosmic heart, and radiates out to all around you in every dimension and frequency, be they 3D, your community, the people in your immediate life, be it the stars, your guides, the dimensions, you are radiating all of this beautiful love and all of the connections that are within you, inside your right bosom, all of the connections of love and caring. And you may find in there a clutter of memories of times that you have loved outward and then not been loved back or you have been hurt or you might find in there open connections of loving freely and flowing and receiving love back. Allow all this love to flow into your right bosom. And if you feel any pain or pressure, or if you have any memories lodged in there, acknowledge them, give them thanks for having been one with you and give them permission to either release and return to their energetic soul family or to remain and fill with love as all of the energy in the right side of your heart center, the right side of your heart chakra, your cosmic heart fills with love and radiates outward, receives back from the outward, and flows around and returns to your heart center, your heart chakra, bringing all of your community love and your cosmic love, your divine love to mix with all of the energy flowing through your body and down to earth, to Gaia, who is receiving the pure love th flowing through you the love of all your guides and your soul flowing through you, your physical love, your cosmic love, your soul love, all of it becoming one, connecting you to all the beauty of nature magic, connecting you to our earth, to the mandalas of earth, to the wisdom of the ancients of earth, to our beloved earth mother flowing out. Give yourself a moment to feel this energy flowing in through you and through your heart centers and your connections. Acknowledge how it feels. Let it flow. Sending love all kinds of love. And as this energy is flowing in you and through you, you may feel like it's radiating out from you powerfully. You may feel like the your shoulder blades are opening up with energy, like wings are sprouting from you. Your heart center 
radiates in all directions. Perhaps your guardian angel feels your frequency is so beautiful and love-filled that your angel can slip in and be one with you. Or perhaps your heart centers are opening so magnificently that love is pouring out in all directions, including streaming behind you. It's flowing around you, through you. Invite the love that's flowing through your body to flow down through your arms, fill your hands and your fingers. You can even blow on the palms of your hands. Feel it activating the energy. Touch your hands to each other as all this beautiful heart love is flowing in through your arms, down through your biceps, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, into your hands. Allow them to activate. The love pours out of your hands. You can play with them together, creating an energy ball of love. And then when you feel that the energy love is solid enough, powerful enough, up your hands and send it outward. Put your hands to your hearts and absorb it inwards. And then bring your love energized hands to your eyes, your two physical and your third eye. And just allow the energy to absorb into your sight centers. And again, say to yourself the mantra, love, love, love. Give yourself a stretch, breathe, return, stretch your body a bit. Mm. Maybe stamp your feet a little bit. Let yourself stay filled with love. You can stay connected with love. Here's the thing to remember. You are a being of love. You are an eternal being of love. This love flowing through you is who you are in your core. Everything else is the experiences that you are having in this life. Connect with yourself 
connect with this being of love that you are. Allow yourself to love yourself. And then look at these experiences you're having. As you're going through these experiences, say, as I'm going through this experience, how will I return at whatever point to love? How will I return to a state of total love? If you ever wonder what karma is about, it is lessons in process, lessons learned. Your karmic lesson is complete when you have returned to a state of total love. Anything that's in you that is below the frequency of love is a karmic lesson in process. When you resolve it, you are back to love. Why are you back to love? Because you are love. You are returning to self. Remember that. You are love. And I love you. I thank you for joining me today, technical glitches and all. Um, if you enjoyed today, please join us tomorrow. I'll put the link here in the comments section where we are teaching a two and a half hour symposium on the joyous heart. And um, I think that the lessons you learned today are setting you up to have an amazing experience at tomorrow's free symposium, free online symposium that Uma, Alexandra Bipat, Rob Pritchett, Carlos Medium, and I are so excited to share with you. So I love you guys. If you have any questions about today's um, experience or anything you want to share please feel welcome to put it in the comments and um i hope you have a wonderful day bye